One of my favorite styles of music is the alternative rock umbrella genre known as dream pop. Unlike the more mainstream alternative Britpop and grunge genres that were popular around the same time, Dream Pop provided more of a tranquil and softer alternative. My favorite thing about Dream Pop is that it can encompass an array of different styles while maintaining a serene sonic environment. Early examples would be groups like A.R. Kane, the Jesus and Mary Chain, and the Cocteau Twins. And more modern examples may be more electronic-based groups like Beach House and M83. But one of my favorite dream pop groups of all time is the electronic psych outfit Broadcast from Birmingham. Broadcast was made up of Trish Keenan and James Cargill, who met at a psychedelic revival club in 1995 and started making music together, originally as a folk duo, before reforming as an electronic avant-pop and psych rock band. Broadcast released their debut record, The Noise Made by People, in 2000, and their sophomore album, Ha Ha Sound, in 2003. Both albums were recorded when Broadcast was still a five-piece band, with guitarist Tim Felton, keyboardist Rod Stevens, and drummer Steve Perkins. The band had an extremely distinct and unique sound, with creaky, buzzing analog synths, pattering drums, and distant, hovering single-note guitars. On top of this, Keenan's cool, serene alto vocals lent her lyrics to various interpretations but always remained comforting and affirmative in tone. If you think nothing is yours And if I think everything belongs to me How long I'll be none of us have anything The band's undisputed best record was their third album, Tender Buttons, a strong departure from its more psychedelic-leaning forebearers, which was released after the departure of more than half the band, leaving only Keenan and Cargill to work as a duo. Sonically, the album is so rich, with the instrumentation completely stripped down to its bare essentials on cuts like Black Cat, where the analog synths get so crunchy and maintain a menacing buzz throughout the song. Keenan explained in an interview with Stool Pigeon Magazine that Tender Buttons was about letting go of everything, being human, and being who you are. The lyrics on Tender Buttons were some of Keenan's most personal and introspective as well. I lost my dad during the making of the album. That was a parallel for me. It came out in the way I thought about music, and I had to let go of my dad. One of the more heart-wrenching cuts is the lilting acoustic ballad, Tears in the Typing Pool. So come to the line, the finishing time, the long distance runner has stopped on the corner, but I won't give up, although I stop. Keenan maintains simplicity in her esoteric songwriting, and the beauty of these lyrics is that they can be interpreted in many different ways and be applied to almost any situation, which makes the magic of that song even more palpable. Keenan had a personal fascination with the occult and hauntology, a microgenre of time travel music that was inspired by the concept of the same name coined by French philosopher Jacques Derrida, referring to the persistence of the elements from the past, commonly in the form of spirits and ghosts. These elements were explored on broadcasts final body of work that was released before Keenan sadly passed away in 2011 a collaboration with The Focus Group, titled Broadcast and The Focus Group Investigate Witch Cults of the Radio Age. The project included samples from various horror movies and nursery rhymes, as well as spiritual, otherworldly mantras. Sun 
What saddens me about music journalism today is that everyone is so caught up in keeping up with what is currently selling and charting, rather than focusing on the stuff that has lasted and has longevity and influence. I think Stephen Worthy of The Guardian put it best when he said, while broadcasts were shamefully underrated, they were also quietly, beguilingly influential. They encouraged people to seek out esoteric or long-forgotten music, from electronica to folk. Trish Keenan is one of my favorite artists of all time because she was not concerned about sales or charting, ever. She was an artist who was very specific about what she wanted and worked on it tirelessly until she was satisfied. This was confirmed by Martin Pike, Broadcast's former manager who told The Guardian, only when everything was spot on would they release it. In the spirit of hauntology, the beautiful thing about music is that it never leaves us. Trish Keenan's childlike, affirming voice always does the trick and puts me in a better mood. And I hope her fans can continue to pass her legacy down like an oral history.